<laughs> well, I mean, just to, just to put it in context, I am a gay man, so there's some vanity there. Listen, <laughs> okay. my boyfriend's a straight man, and I, I just hit record, but it's okay if people hear this, because this is very human of us. I have said before, because Shanti, they use StreamYard, and I have been playing with StreamYard, but StreamYard always makes you look, like, older. <laughs> like, the filter. That's true. It is true. And so he had done a video or off camera. I think you, anyway, he was like, he got off the show and he was like, why did I look so old? I, he, he, he was like very depressed. And I was like, oh, no, no, honey. That's just StreamYard. That's why it's just StreamYard. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway that's the beautiful that's the beautiful zoom is it doesn't it doesn't does it quite quite show all all the um wrinkles and and whatnot the uh the the the, the, the passing of time over over our faces so <laughs> you guys so i just pre press record mid recording we always have lots of fun off camera every show i do before we even hit record we're always laughing about something but i am so excited because i have got two people on the screen right now that i have wanted to to join forces together for a long time <laughs> <laughs> and that is my friend Hillis and my friend Shanti so welcome finally we've got you guys on a show together how are you both doing this morning or this afternoon for Shanti over in South Africa <laughs> you know it's yes a day. No, yeah. what can yes I say? Beautiful day, actually in the middle of moving, so uh, off to new beginnings. So the next week is going to be kind of crazy. It's freezing. Uh, we have a hot and a cold day. I think Harp and DARPA is alive and well in South Africa right now, that's for sure. <laughs> we have hot, oh, one moment is hot and the other one is freezing, but all good. Yeah, wonderful. And thank you. Thank you for, for inviting me. And I'm really really looking forward to spending some time connecting with you as well Hillis. it's super interesting so i look forward to that me too i mean a lot of the things that vice has mentioned during our uh recent interviews and the information that you carry you know i just can't wait to really dive in to really see your perspective of all of it yeah yeah and i look forward to it as and I'll say for you guys, if you missed the first week, uh, Hillis and I have done two episodes. So how this all started is I met Hillis through ASEA. And when I first met Hillis, I thought he was just a corporate guy for ASEA. And then I found out that he was a proud weirdo, just like me. And I was like, oh, goody, goody, goody. This is going to be fun. And I will say, the you know, you guys know the etymology of the word weird it means one who is liberated. <laughs> oh, that is a huge yeah. badge of honor. You, if you're a weirdo, you're one who is liberated. And so Hillis and I started doing more shows together. And we and Hillis mentioned something to me because I had I had done a show and we talked about the different star uh, systems, the different constellations, and this theory that on planet Earth, the reason why we have so many different races is because we are genetically holding all these different species these different humanoid species from different galactic uh origins that came to earth and intermingled and that's why they say a lot of people who who specialize in this kind of theory say that that is why earth is so fought over and that is why earth is so 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 oh, important. So um because we are literally can be potentially be if we get out of our own way um one of the most powerful planets in the cosmos because it, within our it, every individual within your dna you carry all these special abilities that come from all these different constant constellations and i know on my channel we've, we've talked a lot about the lyrans we've talked a lot about the palladians with different works we've looked at and i had somebody ask more about in a comment section about the syrians the from sirius so not from the country but from the, the star system uh the star Sir sirius not the radio, but the actual star system. Although I, I have some speculations as to why they named that radio program Sirius. Um, and uh, Hillis mentioned something about the Dogon people. And I had never heard of the Dogon people, but I sit, sat here doing all this research only to find out that my boyfriend knew a ton about the Dogon people because he had researched them for years because they're really, really fascinating. And I want to I want to reiterate this again. So the Dogon people are from Africa. But as we're starting to put the pieces together, 
every single person on this planet is indigenous to somewhere right you're indigenous to somewhere on this planet and all these different tribal communities whether it's the dogon people or the druids or the egyptian alchemists or the indians um they all are the native americans they all were kind of telling the same same stories with different words different vocabulary and then that got obliterated but the dogon people were able to hide themselves away and protect this information and so what's so incredible is that they are literally the people that have protected humanity's history not just for them but for all of us of where we really come from and so again guys i will put part one and part two down in the description box below if you missed it also shanti before we get into it because i'm going to pass the the ball over to you shanti i just heard from morne so we are usually mondays we do the emerald tablets but i know since you're moving we're we, we're rescheduling that for next friday correct just to let it, me uh, yeah it could be friday pr probably not friday i'll have you okay. yeah in the following week but yeah we'll we'll talk yeah. about when so, uh, yeah so i just want to go ahead and say that for you guys if you're watching and you do follow on mondays as shanti said she's got stuff going on so that the schedule next week might be a little bit a little bit off but with that being said actually what here's my add kicking in one more thing before we get into this the the, the uh the subject matter i just want to take a moment to go ahead and tell uh show you guys their channels obviously hillis please 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 sub subscribe to hillis if you haven't all the channel links will be in the description box below and i think youtube or excuse me um uh zoom makes me actually change out the page before i change it on the screen here is solutions with aquarius rising africa so this is the second channel for uh the secondary channel for um aquarius rising africa where shanti offers a lot of the solutions a lot of you know we, we talk a lot about the scandals going on in the world but this is a, a channel that's really focused on finding solutions obviously we are going through the sophia code on this channel and then obviously we've talked a lot about the chakra system and other types of healing modalities and then let me get over to to the main channel of Aquarius Rising Africa, which is where it all began. Actually, it's your second main channel because your first one got, obviously you're you're getting a little too close to the truth right. on the first channel. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is where all the more scandalous stuff um, is talked about and revealed. Of course, Shanti does an incredible job uh, with whistleblowers of all different walks of life. So if you are not subscribed, to these channels they the links will be down in the description box below um or if you were originally subscribed to aquarius rising africa and you thought they just went away <laughs> no they didn't they're back they're still here they're still here, still so, here. <laughs> so with that being said shanti i'm going to go ahead and hand the ball over to you um to tell us what you know about the dogon people well, thank you so much, Bryce. And yes, I mean, you know, the Dogons, we've, we've, they, in my reality anyway, the Dogons, you've always heard about them. They're these, one of the very amazing African tribes, and there's a lot of amazing African tribes, you know, but the Dogons are one of the truly amazing ones, but absolutely have been hidden in the shadows. But what really got me interested in them a number of years ago was the fact their connection to the dolphins and the amphibian, uh, 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 I want to say, technology. So, you know, I know that that they link very much to, I think it's Nomu. No, uh, do you pronounce it Nomu? Nomu? Yeah. Uh, Nomu <laughs> in terms of, you know, can you hear me? Sorry, yeah, I, hear I'm just you. I know what you're saying. It's it's um they they have there's a there's a they called the the um Syrian deities that came down. They called them Nubis. Yes. Um, and you yes. know the size um for those Nomos. Who are, no, sorry, Nomos. 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 Yes, I think the Nomos. Yeah. And while you saying with the dolphin Shanti, I know you've had Mr. Fox on, and we talk about third density, second density, and there are some animals. Most animals are second density, but there are, are some animals who are also third density, and the dolphins are one of them. They are third density, just like we are. So that's interesting, isn't it? Very interesting. Yeah, so they have this great connection to the nomos. I mean, as, you know, the way 
you see it being spelled differently, but the most common way is N O M M O S, which are you know the 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 dolphin deity, so to speak, um, which come to Earth. And they can also appear on land. They're these celestial type beings. And a lot of their, in their culture, when they do their dances and stuff like that, they have the wooden masks that are replicating um, the, the, the dolphin beings. I will, I'll just call them that. But they can also appear on land. Um, they're amphibious as well as land creatures. So according to what um, I've understood, they are... Uh, not from Sirius A, which is the brightest star, but rather Sirius B, which is the invisible dwarf star. And I love that because it's invisible. And that's where they've been getting their information from because they've been around since the third century BC, right? So, and they were only discovered in somewhere in the 1930s by some French anthropologist, from what I understand, right? So they've been around since forever. And they have been continuing their traditions, you know, generation to generation to generation. They just continue these incredible traditions. And they have huge knowledge on agriculture, astronomy, um, celestial beings, um, just the universe in itself. You know, it's so beautiful when you can just sit down and connect and i mean i would love to say i want to sit down with him i've never sat down with the dogons i've sat down with the koi and the bushmen and some of the ancient african tribes and that in itself is really beautiful but just to sit down and connect with beings who are so fully connected you know is something must be something really really magical so that you know basically in a nutshell that for me is what I understand about the Dogons. And I know they have a lot of the, they know about technology um, that as far as I know, NASA only discovered somewhere in 1920, right? And they've known about this for thousands of years. And it's all around agriculture. It's all around the universe and how things work, right? So they truly have fantastic awareness and fantastic knowledge on life this planet. And I love what you said, Bryce, because, you know, I truly believe that's what Earth is. You know, we are we are a conglomeration of a whole lot of species, humans, whatever. I don't think any of us really know. I mean, you know, and we've come together and really just bringing it together and seeing how we can work together, how this works together in our DNA and how the tribes and people work together, you know, on a more external level. But when we discover these ancient tribes and their knowledge, I think that really does bring a lot of light to our awareness and our consciousness. Yeah. Do you remember, Hillis, last week we spoke about, too, um, the... Uh, we're looking at the Abrahamic religions of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. And according to like the Cassiopeians, who I we we read their board all the time, those are the that's the, the Abrahamic religions are the ones that really destroyed the truth of humanity. And um, I'm not saying anything about Yeshua or Muhammad. We're talking about the the church or the the corporation the institutions. Yeah, yeah, the institutions. Mm -hmm. And what I don't know if you even know Shanti. So what the Dogon people when Islam was was being um brought into africa from morocco because where they are guys it's like right below morocco is where they they live now and they came yeah. from this like dynastic family of africa way back when uh that was a very powerful um very influential we think of dynasties like the tudor dynasty the stuart dynasty the you know, the windsors now we think about the house of valois and and paris and you know and, and the bourbons that the louis the 14th well it's the same thing here here in africa i'm in atlanta but over in africa it was the same thing they had these dynasties of these very um powerful families and when um islam was brought into the northern part of africa half of that family institutionalized with the islamic faith and that's why if you go to morocco there's so much islam but a, a small part of this family said no and of course you guys know if you know that the history of like the celtic people or the druid people 
you can't say no to these institutions. If you, with the Druids and the Celtics, when the Christianity was brought up into Europe, the people that said no were tortured to death. And so the yeah. spreading of Christianity didn't spread because of some good news. It spread because people's lives were being, they were being tortured. And the same thing was happening in Africa with the Islamic institution. So the Dogon people, this, this um, group that left, that said, no, we're not going to do this. They left and they hid and they hid in this area. And it's brilliant. They put themselves into this like terrain where they have these cliffs that surround mm -hmm. them. And so back in that time, it was really impossible to get to them. And so they were able to continue with their, their heritage, which is really the heritage of all of us and teaching their children the truths about how we got here. And I love, we talked about that Hillis last week about um, the Sirius B, how the Dogon people knew where Sirius B was before NASA, before anybody was able to actually locate it with technology. And they even knew of the planet. So according to the Dogon people, the teachers that came from Sirius B that were the amphibian and also mermaid, that dolphin mermaidic uh, presence, when they left, they went to a new planet, which is called Sirius C. And Sirius C still hasn't been discovered by NASA yet. It's still a mystery, but I'm if I were a betting woman, I would bet <laughs> this. They've been yeah. right so far. So do you want to talk about that more, Hillis? Yeah, and you know what's interesting as you speak of this, and those that know me know that I am, uh, I practice spirit and Lamar and light energy. That's what I do, uh, as well as being a psychic medium. And as I sit here and I am being reminded of uh, when you talked about Tartaria, those thousands of years. And so I'm receiving this information literally in this moment of this timeline of energy and forgive me you know bright lights make my eye, eyes water so it's like my, i'm just crying like ah. but for people who who want to understand first there was lemoria we all know lemoria then there was atlantis we all know about atlantis and then in order to save the civilization the people from atlantis went to Emmet, which is also known as egypt and actually let me rephrase that before it was Kemet, it was samaria so with, from atlantis to sumerian times and then it went from Sumerian times to Egyptian times. And this is when the Egypt was flourishing. This is when we all had this energy, this abundance, the, the, the well of life, if you will. And during the, this time, there was a lot of visitation. But this also created the space of jealousy among the pharaohs because they weren't the ones who were being uh, visited most. It was the humble uh, tribes of the Doga. As I sit here, I'm literally am receiving this information. And it is in that space of humbleness that they allow themselves to receive these because the pharaohs of the time were not um, receptive to the truth because they were in the space of you have to show me, you have to prove it to me, you know, that because, you know, as pharaohs, they couldn't leave their people without proof or fear, you know, and so the, if they couldn't prove anything, how could some, how could they expect the people to follow? Which is why the humbleness of the Dogon tribe was uh, more uh, receptive, more in the in space, in the heart space with them. And so with them being in that heart space, they were able to teach them, show them the ways of the Syrian uh, galaxy, of the, of the home planet. And this created the sense of exchange, the, ex the exchange of wisdom, the exchange of knowledge of how to work on Earth, 
and how to implement that wisdom and technology here and how they can be the keeper of that knowledge and wisdom. And when the time uh, was right, which is now, that this knowledge would come to fruition, that this truth of the Syrian existence, the truth of why Lemuria existed and how far the truth of Atlantis and all these different civilizations and how they existed and fell. And it was all because of pridefulness. It was all because of things were not balanced in the cultures and energies. So this is why we have these ebb and flows of civilizations, which is now why we are at the part of what we talked about as well is the space of uh, understanding the human, H-U-E-M-A-N, so the new human, and really understanding the, the full spectrum that we not only uh, bear witness to, but also inhabit, that we hold in ourselves, and that energy is being asked to be cultivated. And I know that's probably you know a different direction, but that was the kind of information that was coming in that had to be expressed. That makes a lot uh, of sense. I mean, we, we know that like, and, and you're talking about that. I'm like, wow, that sounds indicative of, of our leaders today. The ego, the arrogance, the aggressiveness. And, you know, and I know- not so much aggressiveness. It was more so that they, you know, like any good leader, there's always have to be proof of evidence and, and belief. And if no one can believe this proof of evidence, then it leads to the space of fearfulness. And so that was part of the reason why Egyptian fell the way that it did and how it you know, turned the way that it did is because no one could believe this because they were holding, the pharaohs were holding on to this information about what am I going to do with it? What am I supposed to do with this? And so this is why you have scholars, the artists creating these murals these uh, uh, hieroglyphs sharing this information and wisdom, and this is why you know you have so many uh, temples and obelisks and and other signs defaced because mm. well, how true is it? You know, so and you, and you go back to uh, Inky and all the other creators of that time who were playing God, so to speak, and incorporating, uh, you know, the galactic DNA in these 23 strands and what we have access to, not just the gene recognition, it's also the recognition of what feels right for you. And throughout the centuries, that has been conditioned out of humanity. And so, you know... That's what well, science calls the junk DNA today. It's this rant. They, they say, that, but, but yeah. we, I know I don't think any of us believe that that's actually what that is. And while you're talking, Hillis, I'm going to go ahead and share screen because um, yeah. you brought up the Sumerians, which is really important because a lot of um, when I was looking at the Dogon people, a lot of the scientists, the scholars who were starting to study the Dogon people were recognizing that a lot of what they were talking about um is is seen in a lot of Sumerian uh, artwork. They're well. the same tribe from different times. That's all. It's the same tribe from different times. You know, just like wow. you know, you have um, you know, I you know, there really is no way to really express this. You know, when you have the translation of time. You know, black is black, white is white, orange is orange. You know, when you go through these these time periods, when you go through these transformative spaces, when you reinvent yourself, the the reason why people reinvent themselves is one or two reasons: to hide or to evolve. And in this instance, it was a space of both. It was to Keep the information that they had of the time of the creation of civilization. And it was in that space of the humanity's evolution that we took this and we held on to the secret and we shared what we could. And in that space, the humbleness of the transformation into the Dogon people, up right there, 
So go back down. So I want you to see the the mask in the center. Yes. What? So so this is a depiction of what. Uh, Sorry, was... hold on. <laughs> All right, keep talking. So, Let me pull that back up so, again. Hold so on. Was, so that was a depiction of both Samaria and now most of the Dogas. And, and I've seen, you know, uh, this tribal history to a degree, you know, then and then also now. And I feel that you, Shanti, that you are receiving uh, information or, or allowing something to, to come in. So I will pass this over to you to express what needs to be expressed <laughs> at this moment. Yeah. What you said something to me, which was, you know, uh, when you were talking, uh, said something which was quite profound. Uh, two reasons uh, to reinvent themselves, or, you know, it's either to hide or to reinvent themselves, right? So it's like, why would you want to hide, right? Okay, what are you hiding? So that for me, again, would be a choice, a time of discernment, right? So you're either going to go one way or the other with that and to re or to reinvent yourself, right? So are you saying that part of uh, uh, what they've done was chosen that process of humbly reinventing? So it's a constant process of reinventing. I just want to make sure I understood you correctly there. Yeah, so it is, it is a space of reinvention, but in that particular time of, of civilization, it was also to keep themselves safe as they went, the, okay. as they understood that the world was breaking down. They understood that they would have to preserve what needed to be preserved. So when you have, and like with anyone, when you have great information, what do you do to preserve it? You know, do you hide you to preserve as as you hide, you reinvent and evolve yourself? Or do you, you know, be very boastful and say, like, I have a secret, I have a secret, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. So no? You know, Sean, yeah. you run across this in your Ayurvedic studies, but we often what what the what came to mind is what they they call in the East is cocooning. Um, when you yes. be kept safe yes. and that, and that's, it is, I, when he said that, that hit me too, Shanti, cause it's like, okay, they were high and you're right. Um, Hillis, like the information they had, they can't taunt, you can't taunt people with it because yes. it's dangerous, right? And you need to preserve it. And so it's like, they went into that cocoon of like yes. themselves, but also nurturing, um, that, that yeah. Yeah time so i i that's that's something that's very much spoken about in the east as well so that makes sense spirituality you know what's interesting hillis as you said um at a, at a time such as this like now we're able to talk about this shanti and, and hillis has also read the emerald tablets too shanti boss said the same thing that the emerald tablets would not re-emerge again until it was time and so isn't that yeah. interesting that this surge yeah. in understanding the Dogon people as well as the Dogon people were, were discovered by the French ar archaeologists around the same time as the missing books of the Bible were starting to resurface. We've got the Emerald Tablets resurfacing. So I don't think that's a coincidence at well, all. We, well, we yeah. are returning to the starting point, if you will. We, starting, we are returning to the starting point of time, of energy. Now, we just ended this 26th there. 26,000 year cycle. So when we, we are returning to that space and things begin to lift and there are two things happening simultaneously. Not only are we returning to the point of origin, but we are returning to the point of origin in a different, uh, spatial atmosphere. When I say spatial atmosphere, I'm, I'm literally talking about space because we have this preconceived notion, you know, through teachings, you know, if school teaching, that we revolve around the sun and that's it. We don't go anywhere. The whole entire galaxy, the whole entire solar system moves. And this is one thing I want people to truly understand that when we move, we are moving into a whole different part of the solar system where the energy is more in harmonic resonance 
with this cycle that we're in. So in in the terms of galaxy space, we are at the beginning point. Uh, so the end is now the beginning. And overall in the universe, we are in a whole different space. So it's it's the conjunction of this harmonic energy that is radiating, that is allowing for this information to be more palpable. To, uh, it to be more to be nurtured, and so that's what's happening now. Yeah. The information is choosing people to disseminate where it can yeah. be heard and felt and truly understood. I, yeah, I think that's what I was saying. You know, early on with the hiding and the reinventing as well it was like, you know, a, a, as you're saying, with this information coming through, it's kind of not only reinventing i want to say yourself because as as humans as a as a vessel we have to be able to also reinvent ourselves sufficiently to be able to hold that frequency right so the frequency is coming in of a higher nature maybe stronger more intricate whatever it looks like or feels like but the vessel of the person has to suit the frequency so that it can be uh, translated in the way that it's intended, right? So for us to reach a higher level of consciousness within ourselves first, to be able to understand and assimilate that information. And I want to say almost like if we look at Jesus, right? If you're just looking at religion and Christianity with Jesus, I do believe Jesus had to be of a certain consciousness to be able to channel Christ's energy or the Christos, whatever. He had to have had that consciousness to be able to integrate it, speak it, bring it into existence for humanity, right? That's the way I'm seeing this. Alternatively, the hiding, I agree, is either going to get people to run and hide in a freaking 360-degree radius, right, or to still hide the information because it or, or the culture maybe right because what you were saying bryce with sirius c that still hasn't been discovered but obviously we know it's there type thing so maybe to still hide the culture until people are ready or maybe you know uh, that's what i'm saying so for me it would be either one of those too, right? And yes, I agree, people need to cocoon themselves, absolutely, uh, before they can just outwardly express and radiate without feeling that need to cocoon as individuals. But what I'm saying is, to me, that's an inner story that reflects outwardly, right? So we have to be able to get into resonance with this new information and i think that goes exactly in line with what you're saying is that the information chooses you the information chooses you as its mouthpiece i love that i absolutely love that because it's so true and so profound so all of us are going to be getting our bits of information with our mouthpieces going off second to none um and it's all unique to us but it's all going to uh, harmonize beautifully in a symphony at some point right that's the way i see that so what do you say about that me or bryce <laughs> well, both of you <laughs> say something. you you it brought me back to this place of of where we are in our timeline right now the three of us and those our friends watching right now and you can't underestimate the power of the past in the sense that I, I just finished uh, the moon I key rights with my friend, Cindy, who is of Peruvian descent. And when you're going through these rites from the Peruvian, from the Andes, um, you go through this like ceremonial stuff with your ancestors. And it ended up making me so emotional because I realized in that moment, you know, I'm from the Southeast. The Southeast is a very witchy place, right? You know, like women are going to church on Sundays, but then they're doing stuff in the afternoon, you know, with their, their, you know, anyway. But I, yeah. I realized throughout the course of history, especially as a, as a, as someone of European descent, and I know 
Shanti is of European descent and Hillis, you got, you got European in you as well. So this will resonate with you too, especially looking at the Druids and the Celtics and how harshly they were um, uh, tortured for having these quote unquote pagan beliefs, which pagan was a word created by the Catholic church, right. To, to describe anything outside of this mainstream institution and that fear that then was installed genetically into people that they passed down the fear of exposing themselves, the fear of clinging to the ancient traditions that the church labeled as witchcraft or as evil. And they knew that they couldn't expose that, but yet it still continued to kind of be passed down in secret anyway. It was like a hidden secret. And now, you know, I know a lot of people and Cindy, my friend has spoken about this as well, that even when she starts to speak about, she gets a little bit of a panic, like, oh my God, because that is very real within our DNA, that fear of being burned at the stake, that fear of being drowned as, you know, but we're on this, this, this platform now in 2023 where, yeah, we get our trolls, we get the trolls, but no one's burning us at a stake. And we know that that's not going to happen. And so we are we are the the um hope and the dreams and the fulfillment of our ancestors you know we are able now when you were talking about that with the dogon people about how they were holding it this information and it's almost like they hid it but nourished it at the same time right it wasn't just put away in the attic somewhere to, to collect dust they were nourishing it and working it to eventually one day when the well, pun intended or no pun intended when the stars aligned it would be able to then and, and with the French explorer that went down there, I mean, the fact that they they welcomed him with open arms. They welcomed him with open arms to come into their tribe and live amongst their people. He lived there for a few decades with the Dogon. Could you imagine being the only white man? <laughs> you would stick out like a sore thumb. It's like uh, my boyfriend has red hair. So when he's in India, he sticks out like a sore thumb, you know, but they welcomed him because it was almost like they knew, you know, they knew. You know they knew. They they probably well, knew. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, when you are uh, visited with, with beings that have great technology and possibly can foresee the future, you know, these are things that are were instilled in us from the beginning of humanity. This was cultivated in our DNA. All of us have the ability to be psychic. All of us have the ability to be intuitive. All of us have the ability to have these premonitions. And so, you know, it's just a matter of how we utilize and interpret the abilities that we have. I mean, heck, right now, um, we, I am, we were watching one of my favorite shows, Heroes, you know, which was back in the early 2000s where everyone had a different ability and everyone could do this, everyone could do that. But there was two people that could take the abilities of other people and incorporate it into their own being. And so, I mean, if it wasn't, if it, if it won, if it wasn't the desire to be superhuman or to have these supernatural abilities, or if they didn't exist already, why would we even share to talk about it in such a way? I mean, it's just like me and I, and I said this, you know, time, time and again, you know, I, I am God. You know, I am, you know, I am the, I am God in, in this vessel. I am not the, the true form of the full embodiment. But God energy or Christ energy or Yeshua or Lemurian energy or Syrian, Pleiadian, Arterian, whatever energy, it's all exists here. It's just in the way and fashion you choose to access it. And that is totally upon you and what you believe and how you have your belief system in place. And it is that belief system that can, you know, create fear or love or judgment or happiness or joy, whatever it is that you create, it's, it starts with either the lowest frequency, which is fear, or the highest frequency, which is love. Everything else is in between. It's just a, a gradient of those two. So it's how we choose to express that in this moment and how we nurture it when we do have these astral projections or astral visit visitations or whatever it, your experience meets and greets for you. Yeah, absolutely. I fully agree with that. You know, I so agree that <clears throat> we are not nearly as dumb as what we're being told we are. You know, I think that has most certainly been part of our 
programming over time, um, just through media, education, TV, uh, whatever it is, fashion, right? Buying unnecessary stuff. We've really gotten out of the things that are important in our lives. And that is why if we just go back to this pandemic that happened a few years ago, and apparently there's another one planned. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's woken a lot of people up to getting back to that connection, I believe, because we were living a very narcissistic life. Think about that. Fast foods, fast everything, living in 100 meter high buildings, hardly ever touching the earth with your feet, right? Everything, smartphones, smart this, smart that, smart this, disconnecting us from the things that are real. So I think the most important thing for us to start going back to our ancient traditions is to really start reconnecting with the things that matter. And if that means with your family, with your child, with your estranged father or mother or sister or brother or child or whatever that is, I think that is an important step to take. It's that reconnection, you know, the rooting in. So the tree, you know, I love the fact I always use the tree as the analogy for for us. You know, we, we're exactly the same as a tree. It's no accident they call it the tree of life, right? We all are our own tree of life, really. And as long as we're rooted into soil that is strong and uh, rich and full of and properly tended, we're going to grow, blossom and bloom, right? And that in itself is that lovely experiential journey where when we are connected to our cultures, when we are connected to the spaces and places that we feel most comfortable in, that's where we're going to flourish. Can't be take that rose and put it into the desert and think it's going to turn into a, a cactus or something because it's not. It's that, you know, a rose with cactus leaves or something. It's not going to happen, right? Um but I think that's what we need to just go back to. And I love that all these ancient tribes are resurfacing. And it's not, you know, if I look just back at my friend, Yana Smith, who I do interviews with, she lives in Namibia and she is doing a PhD, never been done before on the human wildlife conflict, right? And she's spending so much time with African tribes. She's just been with the Ovareru now. She spent so much time with the Ovareru. And they are one of the first nation tribes as well, the first people. And they've been shoved completely to the side of Namibia. The driest, they're not allowed to hunt for themselves anymore. They are like prisoners in their environment. And um, that's, that's how a lot of the tribes are being, um, uh, disempowered as well, because their heritage has been taken away. And you can't allow that. And it's all been taken away by the government. You know, the government now controls all of that stuff. So, and, you know, now she's working with the Damara. And then, of course, we still have the Khoisa and the Bushmen in Namibia and South Africa as well. And of course, I know in America and all over, there's a lot of the, also the ancient tribes that are making their faces seen again. And I think yeah. that is really, really important. Well, a lot of people, especially here in America and in Canada, I mean, we know that the Americans pushed the, the Native Americans off in a way, um, but the brutality of what the Canadians did, wow, they went like uh, with their schools and their, I mean, there's so many. And I think now people are starting to go, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We need to pull back a little bit and see what they have to offer. I know from my <laughs> studies into Native Americans, most of the Native Americans where I live were actually very welcoming of the immigration yeah. of Europeans and the Europeans were very accom like they they were there to like work with them and they wanted to buy the buy land and do you know and so we have to also remember that too you guys like it's literally I think any anything this last you know however many years has taught us is that it's never been about us against us never it's always been us versus them the the controllers the the ones that are trying to manipulate because if you look through history and you think about even most people you know today like i've i've had the uh, privilege of being able to travel all over the world and i've met so many people that are also traveling and most people are very respectful 
of other people's culture. And most people are very respectful and wanting to like learn and, and be respectful and, and appreciate other cultures and, and, and participate in other cultures. And so you have to think that over the course of history, this was probably true for most of our ancestors as well. It's just been this few, few groups of people that were just diabolical. And then of course, I, I think Hillis, we've talked about this, in my opinion, the thing that really strengthens us as earthlings, as people of this this planet is our differences but that's what they use to try to divide us but that's the one thing that gives us the most strength is the fact yeah, that the unification because at the end of the day how different are we you know not, right? I've, been, I've, been, I've, I've been a healer for 22 odd years now okay and i and i've traveled to different parts of the world and dealt with different people in different cultures and animals and children and you name it, right? And there's one thing that's common in all of us. We respond well to love, kindness, affection. We respond in a painful way to pain, rejection, abandonment. We all want the same thing. We all respond well to a roof over our head, food in our belly, water to drink. At the end of the day, that's who we are. And it doesn't matter. And, you know, you, we, we, we always talk about the First Nations tribe as being African or tribes of color. But let's never forget the Celts, the, the Norse, the Vikings. These are first tribes too. Hey, I went and I did a... I did a, a one of my nephews, in fact, did a ancestral DNA thing. Um, I've got a lot of Viking blood in me, you know, <laughs> which makes so much sense. It makes so much sense, right? And every culture has its beauty. Every culture all comes back to the same thing, I do believe. You know, the more we study the ancient cultures, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I always honor the way the Khoisan hunt. I mean, if they want to take, the guy wants to take his son out for a hunt uh, the next day, the night or day or week before whatever, they will do this incredible ceremony where they call in the spirit of the animal that is chosen to give its life. And once they've connected with the animal, only then do they go on the hunt because that then they then understand the animal has agreed to give its life. Yeah. So I think I'm hanging here. Looks like I'm hanging. <laughs> but, you know, so stuff like that to me, when we do things with respect, everything needs to be done with respect and respect for each other, respect for other sentient beings, respect for the fact that an insect, I mean, the tiniest little spider you can find that's just hatched, runs for its life when it feels it's in danger. Everything wants to live. It comes here because it wants life. So I I'm you know, I know I'm not always popular with these with these topics, but I don't really mind. Um but I'm saying that everything, if it's here, chooses to live. I'm not sure that we have the right to take the life of another being randomly or at will. And if we do, there's repercussions karma we understand that so i think if we all understood that life would be a lot more easy that's just my opinion yeah i love that that you said that it's all it's all that we ever want and you know when we allow ourselves to really understand the full spectrum of who we are the embodiment of what we are you know because we have been on this journey for thousands and years just trying to understand who we are you know because where we live and who our ancestors are and that hasn't brought us any closer to truly understanding who we are it's all about how do we love for ourselves how do we nurture and care for ourselves that that's speaks more to the human psyche than anything. And you Absolutely. know and and on this journey, one thing that I understood and, and even understanding better with greater clarity is, you know, we all have our ancestors. We all go and want to know who our 
grandparents, our great grandparents, our great great uncles and mothers, all of us. We want to know all of us. And a few years ago, it kind of dawned on me. And it said, none of that matters. Knowing your ancestors, it doesn't matter. It's not going to help you know who you are. And, and people can say whatever they want for me saying that, but it's true. Knowing who your your parents are, knowing where they came from, knowing your grandparents, every, your cousins, aunts, uncles, nephews, niece, none of that matters. Because what matters is your soul. And what most is what's most important is understanding where your soul comes from, understanding that soul lineage, who you've been, and how you've acted in multiple lives, which is why you know past life regressions or QHHT is somewhat important, and that's why a lot of people are still uh, gravitating to it because they want to know who they are, and and. You know, heck, the lives I seen, I can write <laughs> a couple of books about, but it's just really understanding who you are then and how have you had and how you have uh, accelerated or how you have evolved or transformed and what lessons have you received from that life into this one? How have you incorporated this new wisdom and information? And so that's all that matters. And what comes of that is ultimately love, love of self, love for your environment, love for those around you, love for the animal, animals, plants, teachers, and everything, everything in your surrounding is a teacher, no matter how small. I mean, it could be the dragonfly or the, the, the breeze uh, in the air or just the, the plant that you have in your room. Everything is a teacher. You allow it to be. And so everyone learn to love. <laughs> it's so funny. As I just... love what you... Go ahead, Charlie. Sorry. No, okay, sorry. I just wanted to say I really love what you, you know, everything you've said there is, is something I appreciate as well. And, you know, you talk about um, your ancestors and stuff, and I agree with you. I agree, you know, because as a healer for 20 years, and I'll tell you why I drew that conclusion, because I saw how much pain was being passed down through ancestors and not just pain on an emotional level, but physical sicknesses as well, right? My mother's got breast cancer and three of her sisters and two of my cousins, so I'm bound to have it when I'm 36. So now I've got to go and cut off my boobs just in case I get it. I say absolutely not. I say, and that's and that's when I came up with this, uh, this I don't know what you call it, saying with my students and my whatever, your energetics is your genetics. When yeah. you shift your energy, you shift your genetics. So when you shift the way you feel and think about yourself and the power that is you, that, that understanding you are connected to God, you have God running through your veins, right? If Or source or the divine, whatever you choose to call it. That is what powers you up. And the minute we get that, the minute we get that, everything shifts. And then we realize our family has been the biggest mirror for us. They come down as our soulmates and so close to us, they irritate the living crap out of us most of the time. But that's because we are denying those aspects of ourselves. So use your family as a mirror. Use your family to, to elevate you out of the, the, the stuff that they irk you on or hold you back on or whatever it might be. You know, that's your kryptonite. Your family is actually your kryptonite if you know how to use your kryptonite, right? So it really is about understanding that they are our beautiful soulmates that have come to show us our shit in no uncertain terms. And when we get the gift they're giving us because they love us so much, they're showing us what holds us back then we will transcend and then we see them in a very different light. Well, that's when we resurrect the consciousness, right? Because it's our consciousness that needs to resurrect from suffering. 
Hey, I'm the black sheep of my family. I refused to be that a long time ago. I'm the sparkly one. They're the dull ones. I decided that and they all know it. So, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. So when we choose to resurrect our consciousness, our own consciousness around that, we start acting in accordance with that. And it's not an ego thing. It's a very humbling, beautiful, warm, satisfying feeling. You don't need to be in your ego. And I'm not saying I don't ever get into my ego. Please, I'm, I'm not saying that. I know when I'm in my ego and I know I get there. But I also know when I'm not in my ego. And I know when I'm in that beautiful feeling where I'm not in conflict with myself or my creator or those around me. Then I know I'm in a good place. But when I'm in conflict with them, then I know that's my ego. Right. So it really is about being able to gauge your own inner discernment for where you at in life. And the one person you cannot lie to is yourself. You can try, but you're going to resist that. And if you're lying to yourself, you're going to keep punching yourself and getting yourself into challenging situations because that's what we do. Right. Until we're not. And that's really what it is. And then we open ourselves up to all our First Nations information, all the love, all the suddenly the understanding that, oh, my goodness, this is what it's been about. And that is what elevates us. It's that beautiful Hanuman quote um, from the Ramayana where he says, Hanuman says, when I don't know who I am, I serve you. When I know who I am, I am you. So my favorite mm. quotes, and, and you're right, guys. Think as you're saying that, Shanti, I was thinking about to about, back to what Hillis was saying about the humility of the Duke of the, the Dogon people, and 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 within humility, there is that sense of love, right? Whenever someone has humility, they're they're invested in other people's opinions, other people's ideas of other people's greatness. Not meaning that they don't know they themselves are also great, but they're not so worried about competing with the greatness of others and seeing us all as one collective whole. And so it is, It's a, again, it's that when I don't know who I am, I serve you. When I know who I am, I am you. And um, we're coming up at it about an hour, guys. But I want to do this again. This has been so amazing. I knew it. I knew it. If I got Hillis and Shanti together, then it would be <laughs> like a power couple on YouTube. <laughs> so would you guys be down to doing this again? Hell yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna put an. I'm gonna put a call out to our oh, audience. Oh yeah, definitely. I would love. It's. I'm gonna because I know. This has been so fun. We have so many like awesome, other awesome weirdos that watch this channel, liberated ones who watch this channel. And so because this started, this all these three parts of this conversation literally started from one comment that I got question on one of my videos. And so it's opened up this whole beautiful discussion. And so we really are all walking each other home. And so I'm going to put a call out to all of our friends that are watching right now. Is there a topic or a historical event um, like the Dogon people or the Sumerians that you want me and Hillis and Shanti to kind of look into and discuss? I know Hillis can channel. Uh, Shanti's also a great, great channeler. Um, if there's anything you guys, because I want to hear from you guys, because I'm going to reiterate this again. This is why I opened up my YouTube channel. I love weird topics i love studying stuff i love learning and spirituality is my favorite mysticism magic this is all my favorite stuff to talk about and learn about and i opened up my youtube channel so that i could have a community with other people who had other incredible ideas and i again i, I would have never gone down this road if it wasn't for that one comment that somebody left so for that person again Thank you, because you helped us look at uh, got us together to talk about this and to understand a deeper level of our own humanity. And so let us know, guys, um, is there another group that you want us to look into and, and, and talk about? And just let us know. Put it in the comment section below and I will send it over to Hillis and yeah. Sean. We can plan for another roundtable um, and, and go deep with this. Any parting words from you guys? Hillis, is there any parting words you want to tell? Is there anything our galactic people want to tell our our uh, our friends watching right now? Our spirit, anything spirit wants to us to know? For you to sit in your humility. 
And as you sit in this space, you allow yourself to be the master of who you are. And with the space of mastery, you simply become you. Whatever that means for you, and whatever moment it means, let it just be that. Beautiful. Shanti, I love that your cat's just been chilling the whole time. <laughs> and that she's she doesn't often come. That's why she's showing me her bum. She ah, doesn't she... often come and sit, but lately she's been a little bit more, a little less camera shy. A little more sassy. Like, she likes to be her. seen, but not too much. She's the real star of the show. I just love it. I love yeah. it. So Shanti, what's your parting words for our friends right now? I think Hillis, you said it absolutely perfectly. I can't, I can't come up with anything other than that. Be humble, sit in your humility, and that's where you find your master. And your master is you, your self mastery, absolutely. And it's a beautiful time that you have with God, Source, the Divine, whatever you choose to call that connection. I think it's just the time is here for that, you know. And in all the workshops and things I'm doing right now, and I've got to say, I've got to. I started a couple of two months back or so, two and a half months back with a group of women. And I was starting with a, you started on eight weeks. After the eight weeks, I said, listen, I've got another six weeks of this. Um, come and help me. Literally, because it's, it's, uh, it's an incredible group of small group of women. And we are literally, it's the feather touch work we're doing. Understanding right now is we cannot force things anymore. We've, you know, as humanity, we've got this go, go, go. Let's motivate ourselves. You go and see this awesome motivational speaker and nothing against motivational speakers, please. Um, and for three days, you amp to the hilt. And then after that, you kind of like and feeling all disappointed or whatever. It really is a time of being quiet, be, and not all the time, of course, but spending time being quiet, being still, really getting in touch with God, the God voice or your intuition within you, because that's going to give you the discernment you need at this time to be able to become that vessel that reinvents itself <laughs> so that you can be a harbinger for this energy coming in we cannot deny guys all we have to do is look around us there is so much crazy chaos going on and we know the dark energies are very very active right now because they're coming to the end of their era so to speak of sucking life out of call it humans or the planet or whatever and the, 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 the more um, their resources go into reserve, so to speak, the more desperate they're becoming. So the more fear is being created, the more all sorts of upside down. Look at all these crazy things happening in the world right now. Fear is being created in horrendous ways. So the more fear is being created, obviously, the more people are giving that energy for them to feed off. So we, we really have to be in our discernment, in our life truth, and that's what that's going to be the thing that gets us through. You know, I always ask myself, what you know, and really. What would Jesus do now? <laughs> it's a question I ask myself at least 20 times a day, you know, I mean, and it's really just understanding. It's more from the aspect of wisdom. What would wisdom do now? Because I see Jesus as one of the wisest teachers. As a healer, um, I resonate with Jesus' teachings hugely. Um, so in that way, what would Jesus do now? And I'm not talking about punting a Bible verse at someone. I'm talking about taking an action that makes a difference. I second all of that. I, I think that, you know, sometimes we're so busy fighting for love that we forget to take a moment to pause in that humility and realize love is your birthright. It's all around you and it's what you are. Absolutely. And so, um, and Absolutely. so take that moment to take a deep breath and know that, that you are a eternal soul 
that comes from that place of love and it's all around you. And as you were talking to Hillis earlier about, you know, getting the information, I just felt that all of these, these beings of, of, of our heritage that we can't see right now, maybe, or we can't, that they are all around us and they're cheering us on and they're rooting for us just like a parent cheers on a child. And um, yeah, I, I absolutely guys. So this has been a very, I knew it. I, I'm going to pat myself on the back. I knew it. I knew getting Shanti and Hillis together would be amazing. So, <laughs> would be massive. That was really cool. Thank you, Hillis. It was really cool. Thank you, really Shanti. great to meet you. Oh, yeah. I, 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 Where do you live? Where do you live? I live in Florida. Uh, I was hoping that you might be a little bit closer here so we could hang out sometime. <laughs> you never know. Heck, I mean, how things go. <laughs> I, I exactly. don't believe that our continents are actually close together. They're closer together than we think they are. <laughs> and I'm going to be real pissed, though. I'm going to be real upset. We could, <laughs> I could probably paddle ski to you. I'd be really annoyed I if I could paddle me. ski to you, right? <laughs> Hop on a canoe and just get to Jante's house and be like, damn, I spent so much money on plane tickets. I'm like, what kind of is this? So put some floaties on it. So annoying. Dog paddle over to South Africa. So anyway, guys, we laugh and laugh. But one day soon, I know we've got, I was listening to some stuff yesterday. It's about to get real interesting for our world again. But you know what? That's what makes it fun. So so here we go, guys. We're just ending. I loved I loved how you said that, Hillis. We're ending the old and Shanti just re re ending the old. And with that ending, we're starting anew again. With the good old, with the with the ancient yeah. wisdom of old, not the not the darkness. So you guys, anyway, guys, of course, always leave us your your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below. Let us know if there's any other topics you want us to explore for you, with you. Um, please be respectful in the comment section below. Um, obviously, all the trolls, you can't burn us at the stake. So. <laughs> bless them, bless them, bless them, as, trolls. As we say down here in the South, in the South, Savage Southern Women, bless your heart, honey which just means you're a dumbass. So bless your heart. Anyway, you guys, we love you and we will talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>